So on to the recipes. Yes. Woo. We're going to be sharing three different recipes of berry water kefir today. Oh, look at that color. Oh, nice. This is amazing. Did you see all of those bubbles? That is just natural fermentation. Welcome back to the fermentation adventure. We are so excited about our last video from making water kefir that we decided this week to up the flavor. So we're going to take you through the process of infusing fruit into water kefir. And this episode, we're going berry crazy. We're having a berry theme, so we're gonna make a raspberry flavored, a blueberry flavored, and a strawberry flavored water kefir. As well as a couple hints of other fruits Ooh. in there. So, let's get started. <laughs> Join us on this journey to explore the world of fermentation. If you'd like to learn how to make ferments like these, start now by clicking subscribe and hitting that bell so you don't miss a thing. In this video, we're getting right into secondary fermentation. Now that's the stage where you would normally add your fruit. So right here, we have three jars, and these are all basic water kefir that have been fermenting for 48 hours and are ready for secondary fermentation. If you need to get caught up on how we got to this point, what primary fermentation consists of, what the 48 hours should look like, and everything basics about water kefir, then check out the video. We're gonna put a card right here for you. And that takes us to our first video that covers everything you need to know about water kefir. So now that we're here, Let's get started on secondary fermentation. And secondary fermentation is when you would want to add the fruit. So in the next step, we're going to be straining off our grains and any kind of fruit peels, like lime, lemon peels that you would normally have with this. Those are easier to separate. And the reason why you want to strain off the grains first is you don't want them damaged by any kind of fruit because they're delicate. The second reason that's even more important if you have these tiny grains along with tiny fruit in there, it's a nightmare to separate. So separate the grains and then add the fruit and you'll be good. And you can pour the liquid right back into the jar you were using. So now that we have our water kefir, we want to store this for later use. They are going to be hibernating in the refrigerator for us for when we're ready to use it again. And how you do that is first you got to create a little sugar solution. They like sugar. So we're just gonna use one tablespoon of sugar to one cup of water. And make sure to dissolve that. The main key is to keep everything submerged. We want all of these grains to be completely in the liquid. I'm gonna put a loose cap on there and just put that in the refrigerator. You might wanna change out the liquid every couple of weeks or so just to keep it fresh and to make sure that the little grains are happy with the sugar solution. So at this stage, you actually have a few different options. These have been fermenting for 48 hours, so basically they're done. <gasps> they are? Can I drink it? Yeah, you definitely could. We have two more bottles no, left. Oh no, we gotta wait because the flavor is so good, especially with fruit. So you can move on to secondary fermentation and let this go another one, two, three days. As is. As is. Or you can add this to flip top beer bottles. Ooh. I've got those right here if we wanted to do that. And that would actually carbonate it. Water kefir isn't necessarily a really vigorous fermentation, so it might not be super bubbly like a ginger ale, but it still might get a little bit of carbonation. Mm -hmm. And this would help. Yeah, it would help a lot. And you definitely want to use those type of bottles so you know there's no explosions. But not today. Yeah, not today. Today we're actually moving on to secondary fermentation with fruit, as you can see from these beautiful jars. So we're, we're gonna... turning this into that. I can't wait to taste it and let you guys know what it tastes like because they look and smell amazing. I can smell the raspberries from here. So on to the recipes. Yes. Woo. We're gonna be sharing three different recipes of berry water kefir today. The first recipe is going to be raspberry lime water kefir. Then we're gonna make a blueberry pomegranate water kefir. That one might be a little tricky. It's a little tricky. Then we're gonna make Strawberry mint water kefir. Yes! That sounds delicious. We're starting with the raspberry lime water kefir. Did you ever do this as a kid? I used to always do this. They never lasted long. Uh, this actually brings up some good memories of Canada. We went up there and we were picking raspberries on a farm and they were the most amazing mm. ever. And these taste really good too, but there's nothing like picking a fresh raspberry off a bush. Especially when they're organic. So for this recipe, since it's raspberry lime, what we did beforehand is 48 hours ago, 
we put the rind of one lime into the recipe. And then when we strain it off, now we're left with basic water kefir with a little bit of lime flavor that we're now gonna add raspberries to. So for this recipe, we're gonna use a half cup of fresh raspberries. Now, if you wash your raspberries, which we usually pre-wash them, just make sure to use non-chlorinated water because you don't want any chlorine residue on your raspberries to kill your ferment. Because with all of our fermentations, these are living creatures. The water kefir in there is actually alive and you wanna keep them alive. So I've picked out a half cup of really good looking fresh raspberries. I'm gonna give them a little bit of a non-chlorinated water bath. There's only about three fourths of the water filled up. Make sure there's enough room for the fruit. We're going to mush them a little bit to put them into our ferment. So that way they get the flavor really start to get into the water. And you can squish this fruit in a number of ways. You can use a mortar and pestle or even a bowl with a fork. That would work too. Now the next thing we're going to do is cover this. And since this is going to be an aerobic fermentation, meaning it's exposed to the air, once it's done, it'll taste just a little more on the vinegar side. If you don't like any of that slight vinegar taste, you would do an anaerobic fermentation and then you would normally put an airlock on top. That could be the fermentation lid that we love so much with the silicone and a little bit of a slit in there. But since we like the traditional way of making water kefir, we're just going to cover it with a cloth and put on a little rubber band and we're good to go. We're gonna put that to the side and we'll get back to that in a minute. Next, we're moving on to our blueberry pomegranate water kefir. For this recipe, it's actually a two fruit recipe. Ooh. So for the blueberries, we want one fourth a cup of fresh blueberries and you can mush them however you like. This time, I'm going to use a mortar and pestle. This is a really pretty one too. I think Fancy. it's like from India. Fancy. I know. So we're going to again give the blueberries a little bit of a non-chlorinated pre-wash bath and then we're going to kind of squish them in here to make sure all the flavors get out into the water kefir. Ha ha ha. This is so much fun. So I can just pour it right in. Now that we have our blueberry for the pomegranate flavor, we're going to be using one fourth a cup of pomegranate juice. Ooh. Now these can get a bit messy. So if you want, you can actually use store-bought pomegranate juice. Just have to make sure there's no preservatives in there because this is living and it could kill the water kefir. Since we're making it ourselves, we're using a fresh pomegranate and to get one fourth a cup of fresh pomegranate juice, we need about a half a pomegranate. And here's an easy way to cut into a pomegranate. We're going to use a pretty sharp knife, but we're going to try and cut just the skin, not to get into the fruit because, well, it gets really messy. These are really bright red. Hence also, by the way, why I'm wearing black. And yeah, so I'm, I'm really cutting standing it. standing away from her. So we're going to cut off the top first where the little seed area is. And we're going to cut around the top and try and twist it off a little bit, peel off the skin so that we can see the insides. Almost like you're taking its hat off. The key is to get all of these seeds out without damaging them too much. We've got to cut into these spines. We're just going to cut on each side, half and half, to try and get it to split apart. Whoa, look at that. Oh my gosh, that one looks really good. You want to kind of open them up a little bit. Ah! When you split it, you might want to split it into thirds or fourths. It might actually work better than two halves. That's kind of what it looks like it did. All right, next, we're going to turn it upside down. Whoa. And take a spoon and actually start whacking it to get all of the pieces to fall out into the bowl. That's pretty good. Mmm, so good. So now that we have all of our pomegranate seeds, we want to get the juice from this. There's a few different ways to do that. The way we're going to use today is with a blender with a low speed setting mm -hmm. so we can kind of crush them. Another way you can do is if you have a juicer, you can put it through a juicer and that works really mm -hmm. well. It separates the juice very efficiently. But if you don't have either one of those, probably the best way that's going to be the cheapest is take a gallon Ziploc bag, put these in there and take a rolling pin and just kind of smash them and you'll get a good amount of juice for what you need. Low setting. course we have to strain it. You can see why pomegranate juice is so expensive. It's a lot of work. Look at all those seeds in there. 
It does have kind of an earthy smell though. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that looks like a little bit more than a fourth a cup. So we're going to measure it out. And now we're just going to cover this loosely with a cloth and a rubber band. And we can move on to the next flavor. So the next flavor, the final flavor is strawberry mint. Ooh, that sounds good too. And here's our blank slate of already fermented 48 hour water kefir. So for this recipe, we are using a half a cup of frozen strawberries. And that's one thing to keep in mind about any of these recipes that you see for water kefir and the flavoring, you can use frozen fruit instead of fresh fruit. Just keep in mind that it might take a little bit longer to ferment since you're starting out with a very cold temperature. So until it kind of thaws out, it's going to be in that like hibernated state. This is a huge batch and we go through it very quickly with our smoothies. Well there. And finally, we need a small handful of mint to add to this. So let's take a trip out to the garden. Let's go! So we've had this pot of mint growing for a long time. It's got a little bit overgrown with weeds. We haven't had a ton of time to tend to it. But check this out. It's actually grown over into the grass. And look at all this. We want about a small handful. I think that's good enough for one quart. Oh, can you smell this? Oh, it's always nice to get out to the garden. Definitely. So we have our small handful here. We're just gonna plop that right in. Before secondary fermentation, feel free if you want to, to top it almost all the way up once you've added the fruit. And finally, we're just gonna cover this with a cloth and a rubber band. And now that we have all of the fruit into the water kefir, we are ready for secondary fermentation. We are going to follow these along the process and show you what to expect. It has been 24 hours that these have been fermenting and we are already seeing some action. On the raspberry lime, there are just so many bubbles. I think it's because of the fresh fruit. Same thing with the blueberries. I think the strawberry mint was a little bit slower on the fermentation process because we used frozen strawberries. Since this is an aerobic fermentation, we don't want any mold. So I think I'm going to go ahead and stir this up to make sure this gets below the brine. This is amazing. Did you see all of those bubbles? That is just natural fermentation. Amazing. It's been 24 hours of secondary fermentation for these jars, and we normally go about three days. So we're going to check on these tomorrow. After two days of secondary fermentation, the raspberries are starting to lose their color and there are steady small champagne bubbles. It's fermenting quickly and it smells pretty strong, almost alcoholic. The blueberry batch is starting to see a few bubbles and doesn't smell quite as strong as the raspberries. The strawberries are seeing their first signs of bubbles and it's getting pretty frothy on top. This batch has been fermenting for three days, so we're ready to unveil and have a nice taste test. I'm so excited about this taste test. Like really, it's been smelling so good. Let's see what they look like. Yeah. After three days, the raspberry water kefir is still very frothy, but the bubbles may be slowing down a bit. Meanwhile, the blueberry water kefir really started to see some more bubbles over the last 24 hours. Now that the frozen strawberries have long since thawed, there are a lot of bubbles starting to appear. I can't wait. Are we ready? Time for a taste test. Now at this point, you could leave the fruit in there or you could actually strain it out. So if you strain it out, you'll have just a straight juice and you can drink that and put it into bottles if you wanted to. But we're going to go ahead and use these nifty little lids that fit a mason jar and you just screw it on and they pour right out. So that way we're gonna leave the fruit in there, get even as much flavor as we can. So we drink it over the next couple of days, the fruit will just continue to add good flavor. But we're probably gonna put it in the refrigerator just to stop the fermentation process best we can. These lids are really handy. We actually use them for other things too. Like um, when we have pickles and we have the brine left over, we just kind of pour it out and it's actually leak proof. That's the test right there. That's Ooh, amazing. It's working. 
And these are really great for our salad dressings. Mm -hmm. Whenever we have extra brine left over from our pickles and things like that, then we'll actually put this on there and just use it for part of our salad dressing. Or say if you really like water kefir a lot, you can make a larger batch. So maybe half gallon and then just screw this on the top of it and just pour some out every day. And you can always find links to everything that we love down below. Ooh, here we go. Which one are we tasting first? Uh, it's the prettiest, so let's, let's start with the prettiest. Blueberry pomegranate. Whoa, baby. Ooh, you get extra fruit. <laughs> there we go. All right, cheers to the first one. Moment of truth. That's really good. That is very refreshing. Yeah, Amazing. There's only a hint of vinegar in there. We've actually had water kefir, not fruit flavored water kefir, regular water kefir fermenting for 30 days and it tasted a little more like kombucha. Mm -hmm. This is refreshing and light. And the fruit is still like so sweet. I'm just taking a wild guess that I think the raspberry is going to be the most flavorful. Yeah. So let's try strawberry. Yeah, I'm kind of wanting to save the raspberry. But who for knows? Us. Strawberry mint. Oh, that smells really minty. Oh, look at that color. Oh, nice. So now this one worked really well this top because the fruit was so large that it was just being caught by the... You know, I can see this going really well at parties. I mean, look at that color. Mmm. Huh. Ooh. Another good one. I love this one. The mint just adds such good flavor and the strawberries, like the smooth strawberry taste. Mmm. This is so perfect for people that don't mm. like a whole lot of fermentation. Maybe you prefer more of like a flavored water that just has something extra, like something good. And I mean, it's good for you too. It's really good for you. All of this is alive. Everything that we make here on this channel is fermented and is really healthy for you. We've tested this water kefir, but how much alcohol is in here? And even after 30 days, there was virtually no alcohol. Without the fruit. It is possible once you add the fruit and you give it a little extra sugar that it could feed off of it and create a little more alcohol. But essentially, it's like a no alcohol ferment. The flavor is going to be amazing. You got some raspberry chunks. Yeah. Which is fine. Oh, <laughs> I did too. Oh, yeah. Whoa. That is a bold flavor. And you can see from the bubbles, when we were following it through, it wow. definitely had some fermentation in it. I bet if we had put this in a, a beer bottle, it probably would have carbonated pretty well. I think mm -hmm. I would have liked the raspberry one after 24 hour. The, the others were good for longer fermentation, mm -hmm. but the raspberry, for some reason, it was sweeter or just... Yeah, it got know. much tangier. Yeah, and fizzier. I think this is my favorite, but I like them all. We hope you guys have loved this fruit flavored water kefir and we really hope that you make this at home because it is so delicious. You gotta try it. So if you like this video, give us a like. Be sure to subscribe. We have a lot more coming as always. Share this with your friends and get out there. And create some culture. Yeah, I like that you can hold them like this too. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>